Chapter 13 Max's horn blurred as he hightailed it from Thunder Hollow. Inside the trailer, Ku sat next to a gaudy Casey A trophy. It was hideous. She was trying to hide a giddiness overwinning her first race. But it was clear she was excited. They heard a local reporter's voice coming from the television. Fans here at Thunder Horror are still buzzing over tonight's unexpected appearance of Lightning McQueen, sharing the crazy eight track with local legend Miss Fitter. Coos and Lightning couldn't help watching. Oh, he's always been my favourite, said Miss Fitter in an interview. My garage is covered from head to toe with 95 posters. <laughs> Later on, Lightning stared off as Coos rattled on about her ridiculous trophy. So, said Coos, my trophy's kind of nice, don't you think? Lightning didn't say a word. I mean, I know you've got like a billion of them, so you would know. Coos lowered her gaze and mumbled to herself. I still can't believe I won. She rambled on while Lightning remained quiet. Looks like they spent a lot of money on it. I mean, I think it's real metal. It's pretty nice and shiny. I have never seen one up close, actually. It's pretty snazzy, considering it was such a small track and... Stop, said Lightning, finally breaking the silence. Just, just stop, okay, Coos? You don't even know. You don't even have one clue. Hey, said Coos. I was just trying to... Luigi and Guido peered in from the loft, concerned. Do you know what happens if I lose this race? asked Lightning. Coos sat quietly. Every mile of this trip was to get me faster than Jackson Storm. Faster! I started off getting nowhere for a week. On a simulator, I lose a whole day with you on Fireball Beach, and then I waste a night in the crosshairs of Miss Fitter. I'm stuck at the same speed I was a month ago. I can't get any faster because I'm too busy taking care of my trainer. Lightning took a pause, seething. Coos was too startled to reply. This is my last chance, Coos. Last. Final. Finito. If I lose, I never get to do this again. If you were a racer, you'd know what I'm talking about. But you're not, so you don't. Lightning slammed his front tire down in frustration, and the force knocked the trophy over, causing it to crack and crumble. Coos gasped and thumped a button, calling for Mac on the trailer's intercom. Pull over, 
she shouted. Huh? Now? asked Mac. Now, said Coos. Ah, okay, okay, boring over, said Mac. Once he'd stopped, Coos stormed out of the trailer. Lightning followed. He wasn't sure where she was going or what she was doing. Ask me if I've dreamed of being a trainer, Mr. McQueen. Go ahead, said Coos, lit with anger. Uh, I, I, lightning stammered, stunned by a fury. Ask me if I got up in the dark to run lamps before school every day. Ask me if I saved every penny to buy a ticket to the races when they came to town. Ask me if I did that so that I could become a trainer some day. Ask me. Lightning fearfully complied. Did you? No! Koo shouted, cutting him off. I've wanted to become a racer forever because of you. She turned and started to slowly drive away. Lightning watched her briefly and moved closer trying to think of a response. I used to watch you on TV flying through the air. You seemed so fearless. Lightning stayed quiet. He remembered those days with great fondness. Dream small, Cruz. That's what my family used to say. Dream small or not at all. Cruz took a minute before she continued. They were just trying to protect me, but I was the fastest kid in town, and I was going to prove them wrong. What happened? Lightning asked. When I got to my first race, I figured it out. Coos replied proudly. What? That I didn't belong, Coos answered. The other racers looked nothing like me. They were bigger and stronger and so confident, you know. And when they started their engines, I knew I could never compete. I just left. It was my one shot, and I didn't take it. Koo sighed. Yes, I'm going to head back to the training center. I think we both know it's for the best. She started to leave, then turned back to lightning. But can I ask you something? Of course, he said. What was it like for you when you showed up to your first race? How did you know? You could do it. I don't know, said Lightning. I guess I just never thought that I couldn't. Ah, said Coos. I wish I knew what that felt like. Then she rode away. Lightning called for her to come back, but she picked up the pace and left him alone.
Later that night, as the rain poured down, Mac slept beneath an overpass and snored loudly. Inside the trailer, Lightning watched television, flipping mindlessly through the channels until he landed on a familiar show. Champion for the ages Chickixia, coming to you live from Chickix Studios, where I'm joined once again by next generation expert Natalie Sutton. Thanks, Chick. Piston Cup champion Jackson Storm set a new record today when he pulled off the fastest lap ever recorded. An unprecedented 213 miles an hour. Lightning watched as footage showed Storm sailing round the track. Then Chick and Natalie appeared on the screen. Wow, said Chick Hicks. So what do you think, Saturn? Stormy boy gonna start the season with another win? Highly likely, Chick, said Natalie. Based on his recent run times and expected track temperatures on race day, Storm's chances of winning are a ding sounded on the screen behind them. 95.2% Chick Hicks chuckled. That low, huh? he said. Then he looked at the audience. Oh. And in case you missed it, humiliating footage of lightning at the crazy eight track flashed behind Chick. The talk of the track tonight is lightning, McQueen finding yet another way to embarrass himself at a demolition derby. Whoa! Almost makes me feel sorry for the guy. Not really. <laughs> Here's what his new sponsor had to say. Stirring appeared on the screen. Everyone relax. The 95's gonna race. Lightning's just taking us somewhat unconventional approach to this race is all. It's one of the things his fans love about him. Yeah, right, said Chick Hicks, back on the screen. Talk about humiliating. If I were old Kachau, I wouldn't even bother showing up in Florida. That could be for the best, Chick. Even if he does race, Lightning's probability of winning is... Another ding sounded as Natalie announced what was illuminated behind her on the screen. One point... Two percent. Wow, said Chick. Numbers never lie, said Natalie. I'm willing to predict tonight that Lightning McQueen's racing career will be over within the week. It might even be over now. Lightning clicked off the television with a heavy sigh. End of chapter 13 
Chapter 14 Back in Radiator Springs, Mate had turned off the lights in the tow shop, closing it down for the night. He'd been tinkering with recycled objects, one of his favourite activities. Just then, an unexpected light flickered by the main building. He started singing to himself as he drove over to check it out. The light belonged to his video phone. He moved closer and beamed at the sight of the caller ID. My best friend, Kachow. Inside Mac's trailer, Lightning looked at the screen, waiting for Major's face to appear. Finally, it did, albeit a little crooked. Mater grinned. Well, hey there, buddy. Lightning laughed. Mater. <laughs> he was so happy to see his friend and instantly felt a little better. You know, I was just thinking of you, and here you are, looking right at me, said Mater. His face only half visible to lightning. You see me okay? Hang on a second. There. Hold on. Let me see here. Mater moved the device round, trying to get his whole face on camera. That better? Looking you straight in the eye, pal, said Lightning, smiling as he looked at Mater's eye, which now filled the entire screen. Hey, sorry about calling so late. Shoot, not for me, it's not, said Mater. I'm always burning that midnight oil. He messed with the screen again and finally got it right. Sure get me caught up on everything. Well, actually, I was kind of hoping I might hear what's going on back home, said Lightning. Well, not much. Not if you don't can't charge and film or trying to run the tire shop. But tell Luigi not to worry. Sarge is gonna track down every last tire that Fillmore done gave away. Lightning smiled. Other than that, everything's good, added Mater. How's Sally? asked Lightning. Oh, she's fine. Keeping busy at the cone. She misses you. Well, shoot. We all do when you're on the road. Yeah. You know I've been thinking about that. You know what we should do when I'm not on the road anymore. What do you mean, not on the road? asked Meta. Well, you know, Meta, I can't do this forever. Eh? 
submit her lightning side. I'm just not getting anywhere with the training. If anything, I've gotten slower, not faster. Ah, shoot, buddy. It'll work out, said Mater. Just tell me what the problem is. I'll stay right here with you till we fix it. That's just it, Mater. I don't know. And I feel like I'm more out of ideas. Hmm. All right, let me think. Oh. You know what I'd do? What? Asked Lightning. I don't know. I got nothing. Mitter paused. I guess I ain't dark when it comes to that. I would give anything to talk to him right now, said Lightning. Yep. There was nobody smarter than old Doc. Well, except for maybe whoever taught him, made him used. Yeah. Wait, what? I mean... Everybody was taught by somebody, right? Lightning sat on those words as Meta rattled on. Take my cousin Doyle. He taught me how to sing and whistle at the same time. He was very musical that way. Smoky, Lightning said to himself, Mater, you're brilliant. Ah, well, <laughs> it's all about the shape of your teeth. I got to go to Thomasville, shouted Lightning. Ah, oh, well, good. You know me, buddy. I'm always happy to help. Think I'm better at that than most folks, you know, talking and stuff. Lightning had a smile in his voice when he said goodbye to his best friend. <laughs>